a hand of praise. Give God a hand clap of praise for the Clark Atlanta University Philharmonic Society. My Christian friends, you have been listening to the world-renowned, the world-renowned Clark Atlanta University Philharmonic Society under the direction of Dr. Curtis Powell. Aren't they awesome? Aren't they awesome? Aren't they awesome? <clears throat> Dr. Powell, on behalf of our pastor, Dr. Michael Stenson and our First Lady, Ms. Patricia Stenson, we want to thank you for accepting our invitation to be our guest choir today as we celebrate Black History Month and our 149th anniversary. I gave our administrative assistant, Ms. Diana Reed, a press release and asked her to send it to the major TV stations. She sent it to Fox 5, 11 Alive, WSB TV. I followed up with each one of them, and they said, Reverend, if, not, if it's not a breaking news story, we will be here. And they are here. They said, we'll be there, and they are here today. We have Fox 5 with Mr. John Gleason, and we have WSB with Mr. Jason Caldwell. Uh, let's welcome them up. Let's give them a belt of welcome, please. Fox 5 has indicated that they will share this service today with um, 11 Alive and TV 46. WSB are here also, and we understand that you may see this on, 11, on uh, 6 o'clock news or 11 o'clock news. Please uh, take the time to review their coverage of this event today. Um, so we ask all of us now to prepare to worship Almighty God. Let us prepare to worship Almighty God. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advanced against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my foe who will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war breaks out against me, even then I will be confident. One thing I ask from the Lord, this, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the days of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. Good morning, Bethel members, guests, and friends. 
God said he will never leave us regardless of how we feel. God is close to us and cares. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Let us now prepare our hearts for worship and remember, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Please stand for the light of Christ. and loving God, our creator and our redeemer. You are the king of kings and lord of lords. From all our blessings come from you. Lord, continue to make us, mold us, and use us. Help us to know with you, with your power, we can make a difference in our churches, our homes, our communities, and throughout the world. As we celebrate Black History Month and our 149th anniversary today, help us to never forget our history and to share our history with others throughout the year. We thank you for this day, Lord. We are so grateful you are our Savior and we can come to you with our concerns. We thank you for all the good things you give us. For last night's rest, for food, for our loved ones, for our homes, and all the little things we take for granted. We praise you, we glorify you, we lift up your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Our opening hymn this morning is lift up every voice and sing. Hymn number 519, and it should be on the monitors.
will now have the introduction of the Clark Atlanta University Philharmonic Society by Monica Liebhardt, a graduate of Clark Atlanta University. Good morning, Bethel. The Clark Atlanta University Philharmonic Society is a select ensemble of 16 singers and is open to any university student that exhibits advanced vocal and musicianship skills, as well as a high level of commitment and dedication to the art of choral singing. This group is a nationally respected and perpetuates a proud century old tradition, <clears throat> excuse me, proud century old tradition of artistic clarity, stylistic authority, and brilliant choral tone. Since the early 1990s, the society has established a stellar reputation under the leadership of its formal director, the late Glenn E. Hasley. The choral, perform, the choral program is now poised to build on its tradition of excellence under the leadership of its current director, Dr. Curtis E. Powell. During the 1990s, the Philharmonic Society enjoyed a formidable list of success. It appeared with the Louisiana Symphony Orchestra, during the 1993-94 season in a nationally televised performance of African portraits, an intense gripping work by Hannibal, formerly known as Hannibal Peterson. It presented five concerts at the world-class Spivey Hall at Clayton State College and University, one which aired on National Public Radio's performance today, as if it was featured, and it was featured with mezzo-soprano Dense Graves in a professional CD recording produced by National Public Radio. More recently, over four million viewers saw, uh -oh, saw and heard the society on Chasing the Dream, exploring black history on a live CNN webcast. In early 2017, several of the students represented the state of Georgia at the American Choral Directors Association National Convention in Minneapolis. Only one collegiate choir from each state was invited to participate. A little bit about the director. Dr. Curtis Everett Powell, a tenured associate professor, from the, began his Department of Music. He began his early professional music studies at Alabama High School of Fine Arts, where he graduated in 1979. He studied with prominent music faculty at Talladega College, the University of Rochester's Eastman School of Music in New York, Howard University, Alabama State University, and the University of Mississippi. He is a member of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, the American Choral Directors Association, the National Association for the Study of Performance of African American Music, the National Association of Negro Musicians, the National Educators National Conference, and several other musical associations. He's also listed in several biographical publications. In four years with the Clark Atlanta University Choir, Dr. Powell has performed several extended choral works with orchestra. More recently, the Society presented a concert featuring the music of African-American composer Moses George Hoffman and performance celebrating music from the Jewish and African-American cultures, among other works by composers and arrangers of African descent. Now I would like to bring down Willie Johnson, a graduating singer. Come on down, Willie. Good morning, everybody. My name is Willie Lawson. I'm a senior English major at Clark Atlanta University, and I currently serve as the vice chairperson for the executive board of the Clark Atlanta University Choir and Philharmonic Society. Um, on behalf of our president, Ronald A. Johnson, and our first lady who are present today, our choral director, Dr. Curtis Everett Powell, and the entire choir that is behind me, we would like to extend our deepest and most sincere gratitude for allowing us to be a part of your worship service today. Um, the Clark Atlanta University Choir is one of the oldest organizations on campus. You most, most of you will know us as the Philharmonic Society, but we are now a combined group, Philharmonic Society and the University Choir, and we are pleased to be here with you all. Um, I would like to represent the choir on behalf of myself, but also on behalf of the university. Um, the University Choir is composed of not only music majors, but we represent the entire student body of Clark Atlanta University. And we're just gonna take a moment to introduce ourselves. We're gonna give our names, our majors, and our hometowns. If we'll start on the end with Miss Aretha. I'm a 
Illinois sophomore music major from Chicago, Illinois. Good morning, everyone. My name is Sherelle Evans. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri, and I'm a junior biology major. Good morning, everyone. My name is Bria Johnson. I'm a sophomore from Decatur, Georgia, vocal music major, concentration of vocal studies, and business administration minor. Good morning. My name is Sydney Johnson. I'm from McKinney, Texas. I'm a freshman music major with a concentration in voice. Good morning. My name is Jasmine Liggins. I'm a sophomore music major from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Good morning. My name is Courtney Littlejohn. I am a sophomore music major from Atlanta, Georgia. Hi, my name is Mecca James. I'm a, soft, a sophomore music major, concentration in vocal studies, and I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. Good morning, everyone. My name is Elise Jarvis Billups. I am a freshman music major with a concentration in voice from Detroit, Michigan. Good morning, everyone. I'm Josana Doughton. I'm from Washington, D.C. I'm a psychology major. Good morning. My name is Shade Marble. I am a business administration major, and I'm a freshman. Good morning. My name is Amaya Crockham. I'm a freshman mass media arts major with concentration in TV, radio, and film, and I'm a freshman. Good morning, everyone. My name is Alicia Dixon. I am a sophomore music major with a concentration in commercial composition, and I am from Atlanta, Georgia. Good morning, everyone. I'm Eliza Harris. I'm from Ocala, Florida. I'm a sophomore biology major. Hello, my name is Isaac Izumba. I am a computer science major, music minor, and I'm from Memphis, Tennessee. Good morning. My name is Justin Dickerson. I'm a freshman history major, and I am from Newark, New Jersey. Good morning, everyone. I'm a freshman here at Clark Atlanta University. I'm a music major from Columbus, Georgia. Ariana Hain. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. My name is Tania Stevenson. I'm from New York. I'm a music major, and I'm a freshman. Good morning, everyone. My name is Megan Smith. I'm a freshman business administration major with a concentration in finance, and I'm from Houston, Texas. Good morning, everyone. My name is Asia Battles. I am a freshman mass media arts major from Houston, Texas. Good morning, everybody. My name is Sharonda Richardson. I'm from Fayetteville, North Carolina, and I am a junior fashion design major. Hello, my name is Sierra Devers, and I'm a freshman computer science major from Seattle, Washington. Good morning, everyone. My name is Tiara Jones. I'm a freshman psychology major, and I'm from Birmingham, Alabama. Good morning, my name is Dontavia Gordon. I am a freshman, I, am, I major in music, and my concentration is vocals. Good morning, my name is Takara Jones. I'm a sophomore theater arts major, and I'm from Chicago. Good morning, my name is Michaela Cleveland. I'm a sophomore criminal justice major, and I'm from Greensboro, North Carolina. Good morning, my name is Tierra Sims. I'm a freshman psychology major, and I'm from Columbus, Georgia. Good morning, my name is Aya Bosia and I'm a freshman music major from Douglasville, Georgia. Good morning everyone, my name is Rachel Smith. I'm a junior music major with a concentration in voice from Cincinnati, Ohio. Good morning, how are you guys? How are you? Okay, that's good. Well, my name is Zaina <laughs> Buckholz. Um, I am a speech slash biology major. Um, I'm from Jacksonville, Florida, so yeah. Oh, I'm a freshman. Hello everyone, um, my name is Evelise Murphy. I'm a freshman accounting major from Philadelphia. Praise the Lord Church, I am Damar Young. I am a sophomore music major with a, with a dual concentration in voice and commercial composition from Washington, D.C. Thank you all. Now, as you can see, we are diverse in our majors, our concentrations, the places that we're from. But one thing that we all share in common is our love for the Lord and our love for ministry. Okay. And we would like to thank you again for allowing us to come out with you all. And we hope that we can bless you like you have blessed us. Thank you. Come on, you can do better than that. Let's greet our young folks. What a blessing to be with them today in the house of the Lord. If you would, please sign the red pew books that we may acknowledge your presence here today. 
I'm going to ask this time if the president of Clark Atlanta University, the Dr. Ronald A. Johnson, if he would come forth and give us a few words. He's sitting there with his lovely bride, the First Lady, Miss Irene Oakley Johnson. Thank you so much for being here. Well, good morning, and uh, I'd like to really thank uh, Reverend Dr. Michael Simpson and his uh, wife, the First Lady, uh, for inviting us here, and of course, the church itself. Uh, my wife and I are really thrilled to be here, and certainly always happy to hear our, our, our choir uh, sing and to see them travel. And one of the things that most people don't realize is that um, these students actually travel all over the place, but they're, they're, they're able to keep up with their, their coursework and their, their GPAs are, are really stunning. And so I just want to say thank you to them for supporting our institution. <laughs> and uh, they represent what the university is about. The university is over 150 years old in terms of the original entities, uh, Atlanta University and Clark College. Uh, and um, most of you know this year uh, will begin our 30th anniversary of the consolidation of the two schools. But one thing that has been the case from the beginning and continues uh, to be a signature of, of, uh, a signature of our institution is that we are a place for upward economic mobility. And by that, I mean that we transform lives and we also ignite new possibilities for society. So just take a, just a moment of time to share with you what that all means. Uh, what it means is that we bring largely uh, people from around the country, but 40% of the folks that are on our campus are from Georgia. And, uh, and they come from their either first generation uh, in college, or they are um, from families of, of limited means. And, uh, and what we do is we, we work with them, we, we coach them, help them find their gifts and talents, help them refine those gifts and talents, and then help them leverage them so that they go out in the world gifted to the world to make a difference. Uh, when they go out to the world to make a difference, um, they actually start when they're on, this, on the campus. Uh, they start by um, working within the community, uh, working beyond the community, in uh, making change in, in, in the lives of, of, of everyone that they touch. And so we ignite new possibilities immediately because the students and our faculty are engaged in the community. But then once our students leave, they meet a certain standard. And that standard is that they take the training that they've been given, they take the ingenuity that they have, and the ideas that they, that they are able to generate and put them in action in order to change the world and make it a better place. I leave you with this last point. Changing the world and making it a better place is essentially what our mandate is from the United Methodist Church. Uh, and, um, and it's also a mandate that is a call, a cry to action in the current environment. As we all know, that the environment that we're in today is kind of reminiscent to the um, <clears throat> uh, post-reconstruction uh, period. And as I say to people that this time, the second post-reconstruction period, we have to be smarter, we have to be quicker, we have to be better, and we have to rec and be more resolute. And so um, HBCUs uh, play a key role in that, in the post-reconstruction before, we play a key role today. And I want to thank you for supporting us and inviting us to, uh, to, to, to fellowship with you today and to worship the Lord. Thank you. You know, it takes a lot of people to make this happen. I just want to run off a list of a few people who have assisted us in making this a reality. Of course, the director of the, of the uh, Philharmonic Society, Dr. Curtis Powell, uh, the driver for, Mr., uh, for Dr. Ed Johnson, Mr. Bill Jordan, 
uh, and the transportation to get them here today. We had DLT 29 Tour Incorporated, uh, who are uh, son and, uh, and daughter-in-law of, uh, of our own Curtis Smith. So if you need a, a big bus, call DLT. Amen? <laughs> If there are any other Clark students out there, would you stand? We may recognize you. Any other current Clark students? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Welcome. Any Clark graduates out there? Any Clark graduates out there? Yes, Amen. 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 Uh, any Atlanta University graduates out there? Y'all got it. All right. Yeah. Any parents out there? All right. Uh, any uh, staff and administration out there? Amen. Dr. Johnson. <laughs> I want to thank our music ministry for, for all they do to make this happen. I want to thank our hospitality committee for what they do, our visiting choir committee. Uh, I wanna, definitely want to thank uh, Dr. King. See, he does all the work, and I look good. So thank you, Dr. King. Thank you for all that you do. Today, Bethel celebrates its 149th anniversary. Uh, it in your, hand, in your uh, bulletin should have been the history of Bethel. So you can find out a little bit more about this church aside the road and what we have done in our 149 years. And we're giving God thanks for, that, for every day of that 149 years. Uh, for our members, we know that we're asking you to give $149 for our uh, Bethel Community Center, which will be built on this side of our church, hopefully in 2018. But we, uh, we're going to claim that victory. Amen? Amen. Uh, but we want to build this so that we can be a church in the community. Uh, being a part of the church in the community means having community forums. Yesterday, we had an awesome forum, the Teen Violence and Human Sex Trafficking here with the uh, National Coalition of Black 100, Women, uh, 100 Black Women, Mecca Chapter, the city of South Fulton and Bethel partners together, and we had a wonderful forum here. And uh, I want to thank all those who made that happen and all those who came to, to, to participate. This coming Saturday, we'll have a uh, climate control study uh, put on by United Methodist Women, and we ask that you come out and support that. You know, they keep saying that uh, uh, climate change is not real, that is fake, but it was 80 degrees twice this week in February. Amen. Global warming is real, and we need to address it. Uh, next Sunday, we will have Talladega College will be here. So Dr. Powell, you can come back and celebrate with them if you want to. I heard their, their name on your resume. Yes. And then on April 8th, we will have Winston-Salem State University as our guest, guest choir. Now, we are a church that believes in reading the Bible. So you will see the scriptures for the month of March. We ask that you take it and follow along. It's real simple. If you give God 15 minutes a day, you can read his Bible from cover to cover in one year. Amen? Amen. We have a couple of certificates that have been given to us. One from uh, the Trinity ta Table Community Kitchen for the work we've done down there. And we also have another one from the uh, National Coalition of 100 Black Women, Mecca Chapter, for the work that we do with them. These will, Brother Fee, you're going to have to find some place to hang these up so that we can uh, show the world the good work that we're doing. Amen? Amen. Now, if you are uh, a guest, we don't call you visitors. If you are a guest and this is your first time here, why don't you stand that we may recognize you? Any first time guests here? Amen. Please remain standing. Our ushers are going to pass out to you a, a bookmark and a, a refrigerator magnet. We ask that you put the bookmark in your Bible. Uh, and the refrigerator magnet on your refrigerator. And when you see it, think about a church called Bethel and say a little prayer for us, even if you just say, Lord, help. <laughs> we hope that you have uh, already been blessed by the worship service, but that you will continue to be blessed as the day goes along, that something will touch your heart and minds, not just for a day, but for weeks and months to come. Bethel, let us now rise and greet one another. Thank you. 
I just love that part, uh, the greeting, because we just get to share so much love, and we know that God is love. Amen? Amen. Uh, I was reminded that for those of you uh, from Bethel members who do not have your checkbook today, you can sign a pledge card for your $149. They're back in the back, and the ushers be sure to give you one. And I just want to acknowledge one very special Clark graduate from the class of 1955, my dad. Hey, daddy. It is offering time, Bethel. Yay! It is offering time. Let us give God a hand clap of praise because it is what? Offering it is what? Offering. offering time. My Christian friends, we will lift two offerings today. The first is our regular tithes and offering. Bethel members, remember we are to give 
$179. Each member. One hundred and how much did I say? One hundred and forty-nine dollars. If you want to give a little more, you can. But well, we're giving one hundred and forty-nine dollars to represent our celebration of our one hundred and forty-nine years here at Bethel. Then there's a second offering. The second offering is for Clark Atlanta University Philharmonic Society. Amen. Who is the second offering for? Clark Atlanta. Who is it for? Clark Atlanta. Now look at these young people. They've just introduced themselves. Don't they look awesome? Yeah. Aren't they awesome? Let's give them a big hand. Now don't we want to give generously to help the Clark Atlanta University Philharmonic Society continue their music ministry? So we encourage everyone today to dig deep. To do what? Do what? Dig to dig deep. deep. And if you want to write a check, make it payable to Bethel United Methodist Church, and we will write a big check. A big check. Someone said, I'm going to give until it hurts. I challenge you not to give till it hurts, but give until it helps. Amen. Give until it helps. Urge as you may come. Let us remember what the scripture teaches us. Lay not up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Do you have any earthly treasures? The scripture says, give them up. Let us pray. Oh Lord, we don't give this morning to merit your blessings, because we've already been blessed. Oh Lord, we don't give this morning to gain favor, because we've already been favored. Oh Lord, we don't give this morning to earn our salvation, because you have already, we have already received eternal life. But oh Lord, we give this morning as an expression of gratitude, an expression of thanksgiving, knowing that godliness with contentment is great gain. We brought nothing into this world, and it's certain we carry nothing out. And those who love the Lord said, Amen. Give as the Lord has blessed you. As the Clark Atlanta University Philharmonic Society praises Almighty God in song. Cat 
Dancing, coming, riding, won't be no more running and hiding. Oh, hear my cry. Morning, Bethel. Morning. The scripture lesson today will come from our Bible, page 173 in the Pew Bibles. And it's from the second Corinthians, ninth chapter, verse 6. The point is then this the one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Thus this reading of God's word, and all the people said, Thanks be to God. You may be seated. <clears throat> Bethel, it's time to pray. Prayer is but a conversation with God. All those in need of prayer, please come to the altar and have a conversation with God.
Heavenly Father, we come to you joyfully this morning, joyfully because you have done so much for us. We thank you for all the things that you have given us, all the things that you have taught us, and all the things that you have shown us. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for being there for us when we did not even know you were there. We pray that you would continually do the things that you do and help us, oh Heavenly Father, to be the people that you need for your work and your glory. Help us to be more than what we think we can be. We offer a special prayer this morning, special prayer for these young people, led by Dr. Powell. We thank you for bringing them here to spread their talents, their ministry with us. We thank you for them, and we pray, oh Heavenly Father, that you will be with them not only today, but throughout their lives. We pray that you will help them to grow and to know that you are the one to trust in all things. That you are the one that they can count on when things look bleak. That you are the one they can count on when their finances are gone. Help them to know that no matter where they go and what they do, that you are the one who they need to be in their lives. And we pray that they will keep you in their lives. And as they walk and talk, that they people will know that these young people are children of God. We pray for this church and the young people in the church. We pray for our leader, Dr. Stenson. We pray that you will continue to grow him and continue to help him do the things that you want him to do. We pray for all the many blessings that you have given not only this church, but this community this nation, and this world. We pray, O oh Heavenly Father, and thank you for the wonderful movie that you allowed us to see and create. We thank you for the ones who did the creation, and we thank you for you for doing the inspiring. We pray that you will continue to lead us, guide us, and bless us. All these things we ask in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. He promised to keep, 
praise for Clark Atlanta University Fellow Monic Society. So I told them I, I sang with the Howard Gospel Choir and we are getting ready to celebrate our 50th anniversary this year, actually in April. So uh, you just take me back. You take me back to where I came from. I want to thank everyone who's gotten us thus far on the program. I want to thank those who've led us in worship, those who have Introduce the choir, those who prayed prayers and read scriptures, and those who've taken the offering. I want to thank our musicians as well as the musicians with Clark. Amen. I want to thank our ushers. I want to thank Benji and Chip, and I want to thank our counters, and I hope they stay back there for a long, long time. You know, I mentioned my father, but we have uh, our more, one of our more senior members. Miss Weaver, she's also a Clark graduate. What year did you graduate from Clark? Class of 54, so she beat you there. Amen. Amen. We live in, arguably, the greatest country in the world. We live in, arguably, the greatest country that the world has ever known. America, America, home of the brave, America, land of the free, unless you're a person of color. America, the land of opportunity, unless you're a person of color. America, the land of prosperity, unless you're a person of color. America, the land of promise, unless you are a person of color. America, America. Since its founding, there is an underline in America that is based on racism and oppression. From the very beginning, it was there and it has continued to today. They have put obstacles in our way, but yet we rise. They have put stop signs on our path, but still we rise. They put weights on our backs and chains on our feet and necks and, and arms, but still we rise. 
Maya Angelou wrote a poem called Still We Rise. Watch it now from a young girl, Elena Carter, who was 10 years old when she did this. You may write me down in history with your bitter, twisted lies. You may trod me in the very dirt, but still like dust, I'll rise. Does my sassiness upset you? Why you beset with gloom? Cause I walk like I've got oil wells pumping in my living room. Just like moons and like suns, with the certainty of tides, just like hope springing high, still I'll rise. Did you want to see me broken, bowed head and lowered eyes, shoulders falling down like teardrops, weakened by my soulful cries? Does my haughtiness offend you? Don't you take it awful hard. Cause I laugh <laughs> like I've got gold mines digging in my own backyard. You may shoot me with your words. You may cut me with your eyes. You may kill me with your hatefulness. But still, like air, I'll rise. Does my beauty offend you? Don't it come as a surprise? that I dance like I got diamonds at the meeting of my thighs. Out of the huts of history's shame, I'll rise. Up from the past that is rooted in pain, I'll rise. I'm a black ocean leaping and wide, welling and swelling I bear in the tide, living behind nights of terror and fear. I'll rise into a daybreak that is wondrously clear. I'll rise, bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave. I am the dream and the hope of the slave. And so I'll rise. I'll rise. I'll rise. I'll rise. With this at the forefront of your consciousness, contemplate a while with me on the topic, and still we rise. And still we rise. Let us pray. Oh Lord our God, we come giving you thanks for all that you are and for all that you do. We give you thanks for this Black History Month, and you brought us for a mighty long way. We give you thanks for Bethel United Methodist Church. 149 years, Lord. You've been a mighty good God. Now, Lord, we need to hear from you. Open our ears. Open our minds. Open our hearts and our souls, Lord, that we might hear a word from on high. Now minimize your preacher and maximize your spirit within, that the words in my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts may be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. And the children of God said amen, 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 amen. and amen. amen. And still, we rise. You know, uh, last week, I preached, uh, you know, this is Black History Month, and uh, so I preached what I call my Black History speech, because I wasn't supposed to be preaching today. Someone else was supposed to be preaching, so I, I laid it out there last Sunday. But you know, there's enough black history for more than one Sunday. Mm. Last Sunday, I told them about the year 1495 and its importance. You see, it was in 1495 that the African involvement in the American slave trade began. And it began because a Catholic priest, a Catholic priest, asked for some Africans to be enslaved. Yeah, a good Christian boy said, I want to enslave some Africans. But it continued all up until now. But it's interesting how God works. 
This church has been in existence for 149 years. It was not always a black church. Matter of fact, it's been a black church for about 40 years. But it's always been a church of God. And God does things in mysterious ways. For 149 years, he has sustained us. For 149 years, he has provided for us. For 149 years, we've been preaching the gospel. For 149 years, we've been serving God. For 149 years, somebody ought to give God a hand clap of praise. For 149 years. And still, we rise. Now, the theme for this year's anniversary was sowing seeds for the kingdom. Sowing seeds for building the kingdom, which goes off of our theme for the year, the power of we for building. And as I thought about that theme, and I thought about what I see on the news every day, I realized we have work to do. The headlines every day are now about the mass shootings and what needs to be done, and how can we stop it. But you know, these mass shootings didn't just start. If we go back through our history, we can talk about a lot of places where we had the same thing. 1823, Colfax, Louisiana. 60 blacks killed, most of them after they had surrendered to the white mob. 1866, Memphis, Tennessee. 50 blacks killed. 1919, soldiers returning from World War I who were trying to establish their own things, their own cities, but because of the oppression, they burnt down 28 black cities. 1919, in Elaine, Arkansas, hundreds of, of, of blacks were killed, and then hundreds more were imprisoned, put in jail. And in jail, they were tortured. This is black history. 1923, Rosewood, Florida. In central Florida, there was another outbreak. We don't have to go that far back. We can talk about Emmett Till. But we don't have to go that far back. We can talk about uh, Philando Castile. Mm. We can talk about Michael Brown. We can talk about Alton Sterling. We can talk about Tamir Rice. We can talk about Trayvon Martin and so many other nameless ones that we can talk about today because the, sewer, the genocide continues. And still, we rise. And still, we rise. As I thought about sowing seeds for the kingdom, the, the, the scripture that had been read was, was, that, was the theme, uh, knowing that, we, uh, that who sow sparingly will reap sparingly, those who sow bountifully will reap bountifully. And I thought about another parable in the Bible. The parable of the sower is found in all three Gospels. In Matthew, it's in the 13th chapter. You know the story. Jesus tells the story of a sower who goes out and throwing seeds, and some fall, and the birds eat it up and take it away. Others fall in shallow ground, and it sprouts up quick, and then it dies. Some fall in the weeds, and the weeds choke it out. And some fall on fertile ground, where it yields 30, 60, 100-fold. When asked to explain this, Jesus said those that the birds take away are those people who hear the word of God and just don't pay any attention to it. Uh, those who sprout up and then die, those are the ones that have no roots. They, they, they accept the word of God originally, but then they fall away as soon as troubles come. Uh, those are the weeds are the ones who, who accept the word of God, but because of financial problems, uh, cares of the world, instead of caring for God, they want to care for themselves and care of the world, they get choked out. But those that fall on good soil yields 30, 60, 100 fold. And you know, it's interesting, in our common day Bibles, they change it from the parable of the sower to the parable of the soil. But you see, it's not really about the soil. It's about the sower. Because if you know anything about agriculture, you don't just throw seeds unless you're trying to plant grass. You see, if you're going to harvest a crop, you might put two or three seeds or maybe even one seed in ground that has already been prepared. There wouldn't be any in shallow ground. There wouldn't be any uh, in, 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 in the weeds. 
and you would place them maybe a foot apart or 18 inches apart or two feet apart, and you would go down the row and place them real gently. But our God is so generous. He doesn't parcel out his love. He doesn't parcel out his grace. He gives it graciously, bountifully. And I believe that if we are going to continue to rise, we are going to have to do the same thing. We cannot so sparingly uh, making sure, well, did we get our return on that? We can't worry about, well, how many people came to church after you did that outreach program? Well, how many people actually joined the church? Well, how many people actually gave money? See, all that's not up to us. Our job is to do. God's part is to deliver the results. It's about a faith wall. It's about a faith wall. And still, we rise. So if we are going to sow seeds for kingdom building, we rise by three things. The first thing, we rise by sowing seeds into our children. Sowing seeds into our children. I watched a documentary uh, this week on the historically black colleges and universities. Uh, Dr. Johnson is right. They are still needed today. As a proud graduate of Howard University, College of Liberal Arts, Howard University, College of Medicine, and Gammon Theological Seminary at the Interdenominational Theological Center, I've got a few degrees from HBCUs. And we need them. In the documentary, I, I saw some things that I already knew, but I, I learned some others. I didn't know that in Talladega, Alabama, a, a, a white professor was killed just because he was teaching blacks. And they allowed him to write a good by note to his wife and children. I did not know that between 1866 and 1872, 20,000 blacks and whites were killed because of the notion of teaching blacks. 20,000. That's almost 10 a day. Just for the fear of educating black folk. And now we have free school and a 50% dropout rate. After so many people struggle on picket lines, with, uh, uh, having fire hoses put on them, uh, being beat, having dogs sicked on them so that we can have an education, 50% dropout rate. When I go to other countries, Kenya, Haiti, Dominican Republic, you have to have a, a tuition and a, a uniform in order to go to school. And I've seen students who don't have that. And they will sit outside the classroom so they can hear the lesson because they want it. But we have a 50% dropout rate. We have to sow seeds into our children now. We can't wait until they get to college or beyond. We need to sow seeds into our children now. You see, it was at Howard University, Howard University Law School, where the dean came up with a plan on how to defeat segregation, on to go along with this separate but equal and push separate but equal, knowing that the states could not afford separate but equal. They could not afford two systems. So when they found out they couldn't do it, they tried other ways around it. And then he showed that segregation is wrong. There is no such thing as separate but equal. We need to do this thing together. It was students from North Carolina A&T that started the lunch counter boycotts in Greensboro, North Carolina. It started there and spread out throughout the South and many other different colleges by the students. It was a student nonviolence coordinating committee, SNCC, that walked with Dr. King and continued to push forward. These are our students, but we need to pour into them so they can get to this point. We are blessed that we have 
Hey, Philip Randolph Elementary School, about two miles that way. We have Bunch Middle School about a mile this way. That we are called to pour into them. And if you're not from this community, there is a school near you somewhere. Volunteer an hour a week and go read to some kid. And if you're working and you can't do it during work hours, uh, join the PTA and see how you can be of support because we have to sow into our children. When we sow into our children, then we rise. So we sow into our children, and then we sow into our communities. We rise by sowing seeds into our communities. In the book of James, James says, pure religion is this, to care for the, the widow and the orphans. So we pour in our children, then we have to pour into our widows, too. Uh, it's not just about the young folk. There are some seniors out there that need some love. There are some seniors out there that need somebody to care about them. I was so happy that this, this past week, on, on Friday, we went down to uh, QLS, and we had a wonderful time with, 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 with the uh, residents there just to show them some love. It didn't take a whole lot. Took an hour and a half out of our day, but we made their day. I would dare say we made their week. We have programs going to Somerset doing the same thing, programs going to Trinity so we can feed the hungry. That's what we're called to do. We have to pour in the community. It's not about inside these walls. It's not about inside these walls. Jesus didn't stay inside the temple. Jesus was out in the community preaching the gospel and doing good works. When we sow into the community, then we rise. Finally, after we sow seeds into our children and we sow seeds into our community, we rise by sowing seeds into our church. We rise by sowing seeds into our church. You see, it was the church that got us through then, and it's the church that's going to get us through today. It was the church that got us through slavery. It was the church that got us through Jim Crow. It was the church that got us through segregation. It was the church that got us to ride in the front of the bus. It was the church that got us the right to vote. It was the church that got us our civil rights legislation. It was the church. But, you know, we just have fun coming to sit in church for an hour and a half, and it goes an hour and 32 minutes. Then you're looking at your watch. Is this thing working? No pastor know what time it is. <laughs> you see, it was the church leaders that led the movement. It was Frederick Douglass, an AME preacher. Adam Clayton Powell, a preacher. Uh, Andrew Young, a preacher. Martin Luther King Jr., a preacher. Jarena Lee, a preacher. These are the people who led the movement so that we could be where we are today. We ride on their backs today, and it comes through the church. The church needs to stand up and be the church. So we need to sow our time into the church. We also need to sow our talents into the church. Everybody has a gift. What's yours? We talk about the power of we, what we cannot do alone, but what we can do together. And when we write it, we, we have capital W and capital E. Because I want you to know that it's a bold, powerful movement when we are together as one people, as one body of Christ. My Bible tells me because you are the foot, you can't say I don't need the hand. Because you're the eye, you can't say I don't need the mouth. We need everybody to do their part. It doesn't matter if you are a member here or a member somewhere else. Do your part. We give of our time, we give of our talents, and yes, we give of our tithes. And I know nobody wants to hear talking about no money. But Jesus talked more about money than he did anything else because he knew where your heart was, there your treasures are. He could look at the condition of your spirit by looking at how you spent your money. It's the only place that God asks you to, to test him. So we give to the church for two reasons. One, because the church needs funds. But that's not the main reason. We give because we need to give. 
God created us as givers. My Bible tells me that God so loved the world that he gave. And if we are made in the image of God, then we also need to give. He says, put me to the test and see what I won't do. And still we rise. We sow into our children. We sow into our community. And we sow into our church. Jesus did the same thing. He said, don't suffer the little ones. Let them come unto me. For the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. He was in the community, healing the sick, raising the dead, giving sight to the blind, hearing to the deaf, and talking about the kingdom of God. Talking about the kingdom of God. And he didn't stop there. In this Lent season, we remember the ultimate sacrifice that he made. That even though they put him in the grave on Friday, and even though they thought it was over, he stayed down Friday, he stayed down Saturday, but early Sunday morning, he says, and still I rise. The grave can't hold me down, still I rise. Satan can't hold me down. Still, I rise. Sin can't hold me down. Still, I rise. Nothing can stop me because I have all power in heaven and earth. It's mine. That's how we rise. With God on our sides. We've come a mighty long way as a people. We've come a mighty long ways. We've come a mighty long ways as individuals. A mighty long ways. If we remain faithful and continue to do what God calls us to do and still and still and still we rise. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen, 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 amen. and amen. Would you stand as you give God a hand cover of praise? Would you stand as you're able for the invitation? Jesus has already paid the price. All you have to do is just say yes. Won't you accept this free gift of salvation? If you already know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you want to join with the body of Christ, you know, it's a shame to be homeless in Christ. Join with this body of Christ where we know that God is love, that God loves you. We just want to show you God's love. The doors to God's church are open. Come as you are led by the Holy Spirit.
We are waiting for just one second so that we can make a presentation. Come on, give God some praise for this worship so far. Dr. Powell, thank you so much for all that you do. Clark Atlanta University Philharmonic Society. Dr. Johnson, won't you join me up here, please? Dr. Powell, you can join me in the middle, too. <laughs> Dr. King, we would like to present to you this check for $1,700. <laughs> Black History Month, we never leave black history. And still we rise on the arms of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. And still we rise. We do have a reception in the back for all those who would like to come and eat with us. Thank you for all that you do for the kingdom. And now to him who's able to keep us from falling. Present us faultless. To the only wise God be all power, dominion, and majesty, both now and forever. Let the church say, Amen. Amen.